when I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. He cut off the heads of 131 lords. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. Hey everybody, first off I'm going to say something I'm pretty sure I've never said on a video and that is if you enjoy my content and you want to stay up on the latest, please hit the subscribe button and if you're watching this video in May or June of 2018, please check out my Kickstarter as I attempt to get on a flight circumnavigating the poles. And since I'm currently focusing on flying around the globe, I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk about this gentleman, Brian Mullen. Well, Specifically, I'm going to talk about his video where he explains what he thinks should happen when a plane flies over a spinning earth. People like Dubai and Marble make this same claim all the time, but folks have been linking to him because he's got a solid science and math credential behind him. But just like every human being is from time to time, he's shown that he is susceptible to errors in thinking. But enough of the prelude, let's get into it. Now, Mr. Mullen takes a bit to get started, talking about how he's never really thought about the numbers involved in the rotation of the Earth. Uh, and then he decided to set up a problem to solve by discussing a trip that he took. Let's let him set it up. Anyway, one of the first things I did is I set up a problem about the spinning planes. You know, it was a physics problem. I studied relativity. I think I figured I could do this. The idea of this problem is that we are an observer, a stationary observer, looking at Earth, watching a plane fly. And this is based on a direct flight I took in college from um, JAX to LAX. Um, the two airports are about 2,000 miles away from each other. And, uh, you know, I flew there and then flew back. And I, I like doing the problem going back because it's just it's more interesting that way. Um, because, you know, we're, we're moving, we're rotating with the Earth. The first claim he makes is a solid one. And also a lot of flat, some flat earthers out there have said things like, uh, you know, if, if, if the Earth is rotating a thousand miles per hour at the equator, you know, planes can't fly that fast, so they can't catch up to it. And that's, that's not really true, because if the plane's already rotating with the Earth when it takes off, it's just, it's, the speed it gains in the air is added to the initial speed it already had. So that, that's not true. But he proceeds to say that there is a problem. But there is a problem here, and that's what I want to get into. So these two airports are 2,000, you know, here's my dimension line here. They're 2,000 miles apart, roughly. We're just going to say they're 2,000 miles apart in order to keep it simple. Okay? And they're also, you know, they're not at the equator. They're, they're north of the equator. Uh, a little over 2,000 miles, both of them. You know, Jacksonville's over here in Florida, and LAX is over here, California. Um, LAX is about 250 miles north, I think 200 miles, 250 miles north of LA, or JAX in Jacksonville. But we're going to say that they're at the same latitude, just to keep it easy, to keep the problem easy. And so as I was showing you on the ball, you know, as, you, as you move up away from the equator, the diameter of the Earth around the, the center axis decreases, so your velocity decreases. You can calculate this, and I played around with some numbers, and I got you know, between 850 and 900 miles an hour for both airports, so I just said, let's just use 900, just, just to keep it easy. Um, yeah, it's a hypothetical problem, but it, it, it is based on reality. So, or, so the reality we're all taught to believe. So, here we are, let's, we're going to fly back to JAX. Sitting on the airport in LAX, we're going 900 miles an hour east. You know, the Earth is moving that fast, but we can't feel it because everything's stuck to it, right? So we're told. Actually, we can't feel it because we only notice acceleration, not constant motion. Since the acceleration due to rotation is negligible compared to our acceleration due to gravity, we don't notice. But that's not the important part. Check out this very basic error he makes coming up. So, the plane takes off and gets up to its cruising altitude, whatever that is for the day, 30,000, 33,000 feet, whatever they're going to fly at, and it gets up to a cruising speed of, let's say, the velocity of the plane, VP, equals 600 miles per hour. Now, since it was already moving, the velocity of the plane relative to Earth, which we'll call VPE, is now 600 plus 900 miles an hour gives us 1500 miles per hour. No, the velocity relative to the Earth's surface is 600 miles per hour. A plane's velocity is 
always relative to the Earth's surface. Now, if he wants to claim that it's the plane speed relative to the center of the Earth, he can claim 1500, but anyway. This thing's really moving, okay? But it's relative velocity, so it only seems like 600 miles per hour to us on the plane, right? And to those on the ground, because his 600 miles per hour is relative to the surface. If a person was on the ground were to point a radar gun at the plane, they would get 600 miles per hour. That's the theory. So everything makes sense. We're moving fast 600 miles per hour faster than the Earth is spinning, so we're, we're moving towards Jacksonville. But here's where we run into a problem. Yes, this is where Mr. Mullen's problem rears its head. Let's say there's a north and south runway in Jacksonville. And Jacksonville's runways are actually orientated um, kind of 45 degrees northwest and uh, northeast, but north and south runways do exist. You can go look on Google Earth, you'll find them all over the place. And of course, LAX's runways all point east west, I mean, they're right on the water, um, or right on the ocean. So we, we get up here to this point, and right before they make the turn, the plane slows down. Okay, this is where the problem comes in. Planes cannot stop flying before they make a the turn. They can't go to zero. And to go to, going to zero would bring you back to 900 miles per hour that you started at. But you can't go to zero because a plane has to keep flying forward to have uplift on the wings and make, keep, keep itself in the air. You know, duh. So it's going to slow down before it makes the turn, but it's not going to zero. So let's say it drop, it slows down to 300 miles per hour. You know, and then it also, this, this, this is the speed it slows down to before it makes this, this 90 degree turn or this, this right angle turn. So here, the plane, right before it makes the turn, is traveling at VP prime equals 300 miles per hour. And VP prime is just the new speed, okay, or the new velocity in this direction. But it's also got its relative velocity to Earth, which would be VPE prime, is now 300 from 1500 is 1200 miles per hour. Nope. That's the plane's speed relative to the center of the Earth. Its speed relative to the surface of the Earth is the new 300 miles per hour you just gave it. So now, as this plane goes through the turn, when it gets here, say the midpoint of the turn, it's got a vector of 300 miles per hour, which is its airspeed, this VP prime in this direction, but it also still has this velocity of VPE prime right up here, 1200 miles per hour. It doesn't lose that velocity. It can't because the Earth is spinning under it. Right there, he says the Earth is spinning underneath it, meaning the Earth has continued to go forward along with the plane but he didn't even notice the implications of what he said did he you know and it had that initial speed when it took off the only way you can get rid of that is if you make the earth stop spinning so you know when you get down here and you're trying to line up with the runway you're still you're going 300 miles per hour towards it make that look a little better and yeah, you still got vp prime here but you also have vpe prime okay now let's stop right there. According to Mullen's math, what should the plane's eastward velocity relative to the Earth be? When the plane was 600 miles per hour here, he called it 1500. When it slowed to 300, he called it 1200. Now it's turned completely south. According to what he's already established, what should its eastward velocity be? It, it should still have the 900 miles per hour that he called uh, relative to the Earth, right? But watch this. Well, there's a real problem there because the airport, the ground over here, is moving, you can see that, at 900 miles per hour. You know, we said the velocity of the Earth is the same at both airports. But the plane is moving to the east still at 1200 miles per hour. No notice that pause? But the plane is moving to the east still at 1200 yeah. miles yeah, per you hour. You see, right there is my favorite moment of this video because I'm pretty sure right there his real math brain told him 900 miles per hour. And there was a second of struggle before his hypno toed flat earth brain kicked in and screwed the math up. <laughs> Whew, the, that silence right there is 
awesome. The plane is moving faster than the runway. They can't line up. And then he goes on to try to talk about how the air can't be held to the earth and maybe gravity doesn't work to keep the atmosphere in, all of which is unrelated to the fundamental error of his claims. But even as he drifts along an unnecessary tangent, he makes more errors. But, you know, Newton's first law says that an object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. So an object in motion relative to another object in motion stays in motion relative to that object unless acted upon by an outside force. It has to. Uh, the, the atmosphere doesn't answer the question. So apparently, Mr. Mullen, the engineer, doesn't recognize air resistance, the friction of the atmosphere, as a force acting on the plane. It, it, it doesn't matter for his math here, but it comes up in his next video, and it shows a fundamental gap in his understanding. And, and then there's this here. By conservation of, of angular momentum, air at higher altitudes is, would have to be spinning slower. And this, you know, this is where you know, the actual concept of dark matter comes from in galaxies, because stars at the outer edges are spinning at the same speed as uh, stars in the... The, the inner ring of the galaxies, and so we say there's more mass there to make up for this, and that's another thing I'll cover in a, in a coming episode. Why, why is he invoking the mystery of dark matter here? It has nothing to do with the motion of our atmosphere. Dark matter is literally a placeholder term for matter we can't identify. It has nothing to do with our atmosphere. We know what is in our atmosphere. Yes, it is a complex cocktail of mechanics, fluid, and thermodynamics that causes the atmosphere's motion, but dark matter isn't part of the picture, dude. Everything breaks down to a simple algebraic expression. We go through all this proof to back check what these guys have done, but never did we back check our theory of living on a spinning ball, ever. You know, we don't do these problems. Why? Well, if you took physics classes and didn't do things like this, that explains why you screwed the pooch on this one. Let's see how it should have worked out for you, if you had done it correctly. We start off with a plane at LAX. The plane on the ground and the airport have an instantaneous velocity relative to the center of the Earth of 900 miles per hour. That's what they start with. The plane takes off and accelerates to 600 miles per hour relative to the airport and the ground. Now you can say the plane is traveling at 1500 miles per hour relative to the center of the earth, but who cares? The plane isn't going to land on the center of the earth. It's going to land on the surface, which is going 900 miles per hour along with the plane. So relative to the airport, 600 miles per hour eastward. Now, Mullen, for some reason, made a point to talk about the plane having to slow down. So let's do that, too. The plane slows to 300 miles per hour eastward relative to the ground. And both the plane and the ground and the LAX airport are moving an additional 900 miles per hour eastward. Remember, they started with that. Now, watch this next bit because it's crucial. The plane is going 300 miles per hour and will continue at 300 as it turns and goes southward. At this point, all of the velocity is eastward. Here, when the plane is going southeast, the 300 mile per hour vector can be split into an eastward vector of 212 and a southward one of the same value. plus the 900 miles per hour eastward motion that everything started with. Notice how the eastward vector has decreased and the southward has increased? Important. Finally, at this point, the velocity vector is all southward, 300 miles per hour relative to the ground. So now we come to the moment of truth. The plane is approaching the Jacksonville airport at 300 miles per hour, but wait, don't we still have the 900 mile per hour eastward vector that we began with? Yes, we do. But don't worry. The Jacksonville airport has a 900 miles per hour eastward vector too. It's on the ground, moving with the earth. So relative to each other, the plane and the Jacksonville airport have zero eastern motion. So the plane can land just fine. So there you have it, folks. As you can see, it was just simple errors that made Brian Mullen and countless others believe that a plane shouldn't be able to land 
on a moving Earth. Now, Mr. Mullen goes on to talk about planes having to nose down, the horizon being at eye level, two claims that have long since been debunked. He says he's at a loss. He doesn't know what to think, and that's understandable. Given the thinking that he's shown here, he's not very good at it. That's my job! That's what I do! no one on this planet to even challenge me. Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory. 